This is going to be a video on my acoustic treatment as I'm coming to the end of what I'm going to do in this room. Nearly complete, as I've said about 20 million times. I'm going to do a walk through some of this treatment, what it does and what I've got planned for the future. So starting in this corner, there are several different types of traps. So we're going to start on this square obelisk looking thing here and this is a monster base trap which is about 17 centimeters deep and next to it is another monster base trap but across the full length of this it's got a, a membrane so that it only covers the base frequencies same applies to this this is a corner base trap and it also has a, a membrane on it to lower the frequency range so that it mainly does bass above there's another membrane base trap, so it's exactly the same as this one, but across the top. In fact, all around the room, these are all membrane traps. So on both sides of the room, on the full length, we've got these membrane base traps along the tops. And in the last corners, it's going to be the last slightly regret. I found out after I could have got half length ones of these, and instead of having these foam cubes take up the last whatever it is, 60 centimetres. Um, I could have got half length ones, but there we go, that's uh, that's life. So those are the majority of the base traps. They're then mirrored on this side. With the exception of this, this isn't a monster base trap. It's a 244 full range trap next to a monster base trap with a membrane below it because the amps are there and they get hot and I don't want it overlapping where the amps get hot. So um, in the corners, we've got these which are corner base traps that I think typically people get wrong when they say they don't absorb any base and then I'll show you an example where they're tucked into a corner with this the back corner of the trap actually into the corner now given that they're working on quarter wavelength rules so if they're stuck right into the corner they're not going to do anything for base so what I've done with mine is turn them around so then the corner rather than sticking into the corner, sticks out into the room. Um, the cubes at the bottom, these first two, are actually full depth, so they're the same as these ones up high. 30 centimetre cubes, basically. Okie dokie. So that's the front. A few other bits and bobs going on here, though. So over here, we have got another couple of monster base traps, but these ones have got scatter plates built in, so you might be able to just see them if I cover the light, sort of lines that go down them on both sides, and they're scatter plates, just to return some of the high frequency energy back into the room. Same as this QRD diffuser, N23 array, so there's three, one, two, three, N23 QRD diffusers by GIK. And you can probably hear my voice bouncing off the ceiling now. It's one of the few untreated areas. Might as well cover that now. So I'm just going to get another couple of these panels now that we're at the stage where I know what needs to be treated. So I've got these running the full length, but my idea was to leave it last in case I did have to treat any nasty room modes. And then I've got a nice big area to drop in some base traps, probably something like that or double width version of those in that area or those areas if need be but I, I don't need to so um, they're just going to end up being these panels because I actually do have a bit of a lack of absorption in the midband because of all of these scatter plates which I'll come to in a minute so that's a, a diffuser array and um, below it there's a, a base trap slash diffuser very basic simple poly diffuser probably won't talk about that too much it's just a curved piece of wood with a bit of insulation material inside it does actually absorb base so that's that either side we've got two diaphragm absorbers so while these are membranes they've just got a piece of i don't know what it is vinyl or something that's on the front plate to to be slightly diaphragmatic they're not diaphragm absorbers whereas these are so these are a very very rigid box very very heavy and they've got a, it's like airtight basically, and the membrane on the front is membranic, membranic, is that the right word? Membranic. 
think that's the right word. It moves in and out with the frequency that it's tuned to. So these are tuned to 70 hertz. And they're behind the main front left and right speakers. Moving on. So over here we've got a monster bass strap, but it's not because it's got a scatter plate on the front, which are these wooden plates. And again, like with the scatter plates on the monster bass straps by the window, these return some of the energy, but the scatter plates on the front, basically. That's the main difference between those. They're doing exactly the same thing, returning a bit of high frequency energy back into the room. So each of these holes is absorbing where there isn't a hole, it's not. And it scatters or breaks at the sound as it returns. And uh, you can probably see those all the way around the back half of the room and another poly diffuser on the back there. I will eventually, I might as well as I'm at this area, remove this. So this is just sort of propped up in place and I'll uh, eventually put another one of these there. I say one of those because these are slightly less deep. Because they're on the back wall, I'm not going to bore you with the details of my logic behind using thinner panels on the back wall when everyone says you should use the thickest ones there. Um, also, people say use diffusion on the back and that has a limited range, so I am kind of getting into the logic of why I've used thinner panels here. I just didn't think it would do much difference given that you've got a, a wave hitting it straight on sort of not coming in at an angle like with these where you get a lot more you know effective depth because something's not hitting it straight on it's going in at an angle whereas obviously with these it's just seeing it straight on so even if you quadrupled the depth i don't think it would massively improve their uh <laughs> their frequency response and that's from you know fiddling around with these obviously i've got various depths and i'll put various different panels in this position and having a really thick panel hmm, yeah it didn't really I, I didn't like what it did and it made that corner feel very claustrophobic as well. Just not because it was taking up any more space. We're talking about a few more centimetres, you know, it come out to here as opposed to here. And uh, yeah, it just made the room feel claustrophobic in terms of the, the sense of space with that very thick absorption right next to my head when I do my show. So these are thinner panels right by me just because they felt more comfortable. The one that's a bit further away is still deep, even though it's right behind the door where you really shouldn't have a thick one. It, kind of stops the door opening, but the speaker did that anyway, all the way up there. Um, along the top, we've got obviously these, and th these are the same 30 centimeter pieces. They're just off cuts from the ones in the front corner, because to get them exact floor to ceiling, I had to get them custom made. And those ones are slightly less than 30 centimeters high. And the remaining sections just went up here to work as uh, first reflection absorbers for my rear speakers not that that's particularly important not exactly a critical detail needing to be counted for by the way rear speakers who cares but that's that's that that's what i've done for them and uh, that's about it you know the door will say the same this panel will get removed and hopefully change into another one of these and then the whole back half of the room will be the same in terms of you know it spread out scatter plates these things all the way around and then in the front half of the room past this sofa's end point is where all the soft stuff starts at least on the side walls so that you know the area that's being occupied you, you don't get a sense of being dead so if i if i talk right next to one of these scatter plates it sounds very natural but as soon as you sort of get into the i'll make it really black and you can then focus on how much more dead my voice sounds next to one of these sponges as they call them sound sponges so yeah, so you, I've tried to keep the amount of panelling and what it does in such a manner that you're not losing the sound of the room. And it's very, very comfortable as a result. The same goes for these. They're returning the sound back off that window whilst breaking it up. So you're not losing it. It still sounds like you're talking at a window, uh, which might sound like a crazy thing to be concerned about. But the more you soak up sound in a room, the more dead it gets. And... Um, it's not necessarily a bad thing. You want a very short delay time or a short reverb time in a room like this because it's small. But you also want to feel like you're in a room. <laughs> you want to have the energy returned back to you. And uh, obviously that doesn't happen if you've got no scatter plates and just these big sponges all over the wall. So there we go. So that's the, the 
logic behind those. I've got another one of these corner traps, but it doesn't have a membrane, obviously, like the one I showed you at the start of this. It's got a scatter plate on the front, so it doesn't go as low. What else can I show you? Is that everything? These panels on the ceiling are made of melamine. Just a very, very lightweight sound absorption product with various uses. You might be more familiar with it f f uh, from the other application that melamine gets, which is like those everlasting sponges you get in kinships. Like, I don't know how you describe them. They're like a white sponge that can rub anything out in the marketing, but that's melamine. Just a slightly different cell structure. So this is specifically designed to be open cell acoustic foam. It's very lightweight. It's got a sticky back to it. Sticks straight on the ceiling. And uh, I've already decided this is going to be a continuation. It's not going to be different traps in a slightly different colour that will look slightly weird, but give me a better bass response because it's not needed. Last but not least are these, which I've just purchased. So somebody has purchased these around the same sort of time that I purchased all the rest of this. So over the last couple of years, I've been buying all of this stuff. And while that was going on, they had a badge change. So GIK changed from this style logo here. If you can see that, when it focus. There we go, just, just about good enough to see. That logo changed. Let's find a different one. I actually took the logos off most of them to this. That's the new logo. So based on that, I can sort of date how old a second hand box is. And in this case, these two boxes, which are also diaphragmatic absorbers like the ones on the front. So those two black panels that are tuned to 70 Hertz. These are tuned to 40 Hertz, hence them being quite a lot deeper. So these are about 26, 27 centimetres deep, 60 by 60 like all the other panels. So same shape and size as this, just a lot deeper. And uh, yeah, they came up on eBay. So the guy had bought them in the last 12 months. Presumably his expectations were shattered when he put in and it didn't, I don't know, do what he was hoping for. But I'd got a pretty good idea what I wanted to do in this room and planned it out. And uh, they were part of the plan. In a slightly different orientation, I originally anticipated that they go here and here, stacked on top of each other. But after pressure mapping the room, that is where the pressure was, so that is where they've got to go. Directly where the pressure is, because they are activated by pressure, and pressure is at its highest on a wall, as opposed to air velocity. So the air velocity is at its highest as it reaches the wall. When it reaches it, it, it reaches zero but it's pressing on something, i.e. the pressure is at its highest. So at a boundary on the wall, in other words, that's where you get the pressure. So that is where a pressure trap goes. Their official name is Scopus T40 Membrane Traps. And uh, they are diaphragmatic absorbers tuned to 40 hertz. And they're very limited in their range, probably less than an octave. Probably less than half an octave. But that is them. And that's pretty much it. That's all of the acoustic treatment, other than the last couple of panels that are go, going up on the ceiling. And a panel next to me to replace this panel that's filling a gap for the time being. As I get all echoey in my kitchen and you can hear noises because none of it's soaked up. As I round out this video showing you my acoustic treatment thus far. There may be one more update video on this when I've got the last couple of panels and literally I have no more surface area to cover than everything's covered. It will be, in the truest sense of the word, a fully treated studio. But until then, there's a couple of places in here that have still got space and I know of various parts of the frequency response that I do want to tart up, so to speak. So that's what's going to happen next. But there you go, I'll give you one last look around. This is what the room looks like. And uh, that's about it. So I will back out of this to give you a nice wide angle and see you all in the next video.